Dark Souls has got to be one of the most persistent and entertaining game series ever to be made to date. Noted for its difficulty, the RPG series is created by a group known as From Software, who have so far made five games in the Soulsborne series. Demon's Souls, Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, Bloodborne, and relatively recently, Dark Souls 3. The group's presence on the list of approved developers for the Nintendo Switch shows that From Software isn't quite done with their games yet, and possibly might not even be done with the Souls series yet. Today, I'm arguing for reasons as to why the third game in the main Souls series, Dark Souls 3, is the best out of all others. Just to note, this will not include Bloodborne or Demon's Souls, as the former does not share lore with the main Souls series, and the latter is quite different to the main series. So, without further ado, let's jump on to the countdown reason number 5. Number 5 Best Multiplayer Say what you want, but the third game has had, out of all of them, the best multiplayer. It did with stupid level-only restriction in the first game, which allowed for insane builds like the giant dad build to be abused, and the even worse soul memory system of the second game, which measured how many souls a character had picked up, making soul farming, something already ruined by despawning enemies, even more frustrating. People who commonly died with lots of souls on them and then failed to retrieve them were often matched with people who had saved every last soul and used it to upgrade their mini-maxed exploitation build and weapons, completely wrecking their opponent. The third game, however, fixed this issue. Instead, it imposed a restriction on both soul level and upgrade weapon level, making lower level 20 twinks with plus 10 heavy dark swords having to reconsider their plans after they were inevitably matched with similar players. In addition to this, the game heavily supported friendly multiplayer, making it easy to co-op or duel with your friends by introducing a password system, letting you slay bosses or duel each other easily without having to spend ages trying to get a similar soul level or memory. That's why I immediately recommend it to all people wanting to find a Souls game to co-op with their friends. Number 4 Better Graphics I know people say graphics matter little in video games, but let's be honest, the graphics for Dark Souls 1, however excellent they were, were in some cases shoddy and slightly awful. The Souls games have, in general, been pretty far back in terms of their graphical quality, considering the time that they were released in. The second game's graphics were absolutely abysmal, and it commonly contained repeating floor textures, poor effects on UI, and was completely different to the pre-release trailer, as a result of having it to be downscaled to the point where it could reliably run on the previous generation, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360. The graphics for the third game heavily complement the new style, overall darkening the theme of the game, and also containing relatively decent graphics for the time it was released in. Plus, the revisiting of older areas with newer graphics is just awesome. Which brings me to my next point. Number 3 Nostalgia Trips Despite being probably the most nostalgic game to be made recently, Dark Souls 3 certainly doesn't overdo it. We revisit Anorlando, fighting a Lord of Cinder in a room where we previously fought the game's first climactic duo boss, Ornstein and Smo. We see the death of an old friend and bask in the nostalgia. We also pick up a familiar gimmick weapon that was previously used to kill a giant manta ray in Demon Souls, this time using it to kill a giant. And finally, the final boss of the game has two phases, one reminiscent of the player in Dark Souls 1, and one reminiscent of the first game's final boss, Gwyn, Lord of Cinder. In my opinion, this is just enough to garner love for the game, but it's not too overdone to the point where it makes everything a bit repetitive. Number 2 NPCs this was a slightly tough one, because the first game had many lovable NPCs as well, but I still in any sense find those in the third game to be the best. We see old familiar faces, such as Sigmir of Katarina, who seems to have returned under the name Sigward, the blacksmith from the first game, and the only character to move their lips when they're speaking, Andre, and Patches, who has been in every Dark Souls game to date, including Demon Souls, although he was named Pate in the second one. In addition to this, we have new NPCs, like Hawkwood, Gives me connections. the Firekeeper, Cyrus of the Sunrus Realms, and Archdeacon McDonnell! Number one. The bosses! Okay, this is controversial because lots of people dislike many of the bosses in this game, and I can't say I don't understand why. Many bosses, like the Deacons of the Deep or the Curse Rotted Greatwood, are just plain boring and unengaging to fight, and many bosses are overwhelmingly easy, like Yorm the Giant with the Storm Ruler. But for every Deacon Congregation, Giant Skeleton, or Pushover Giant, we have a badass boss, like the Dancer of the Burial Valley, 
who is utterly awesome, the Soul of Cinder, who is honestly a great satire on the Dark Souls player, using many of the player's cheesing tactics, black flipping, etc., and Champion Gunder, a badass variation on the first boss, or as I like to call him, Gitgunder. The DLC contained a barefoot, scythe-wielding nurse, who fought in conjunction with a large alligator man wielding a bowl of soup, and the game's hardest boss by far, the Nameless King, is literally the firstborn of Dark Souls 1's final boss, Gwyn, Lord of Cinder. We also find out that there was some sort of tension between the Nameless King and the nostalgic OG Pokemaster, Ornstein, linking the world of the first game to the third neatly. All of these reasons, in my opinion, converge at a point where it can be argued in the sense that Dark Souls 3 is the best game in the entire series. Believe me, I know a lot of these reasons might be voided in your eyes, but this sums up to me why out of all Souls games, I enjoyed the third the most. Thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, I request you to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more. See you next time. Thank you.